Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is the 29th of May, 2015. Last Friday in May, we're heading into June. God, getting awful close to having half the year done already. <laughs> Seems like it just became 2015. <laughs> Am I the only one that's noticed time is sort of flying by? Maybe it's just the new job. At any rate, guys, we got... Uh, not a whole heck of a lot. Uh, it is that time of the month where things sort of uh, trickle in, uh, both information-wise and kit-wise. We've got one new kit, uh, a couple, three reissues, and uh, just, a, you know, not really a whole heck of a lot information-wise because, again, we're in that odd sort of week where, uh, you know, none of the July spot run stuff will be announced for another week or two. And, of course, the June kits won't start coming in for another week or two as well. We will have our uh, regular June uh compilation video of all the releases we expect in june uh in a few days once we officially know what Ravel and round two will be producing and uh you know, we'll go from there at any rate uh the the new pieces of information we have this week uh like i said real real scant uh stuff uh one thing i noticed when i was looking at some uh orders on hobby link japan before i uh sent myself a whole bunch of stuff uh tonight was the fact that the uh ebro citron DS19 is already on order stop, so uh, in spite of or despite of the price, depending on how you look at things, of that uh, you know sixty dollar price tag or or thereabouts, their uh, their you know pre-orders are sold out. So uh, that kit is going to be pop uh, popular despite the uh, hefty uh, price tag on it. I will say, well, a lot of people are like, well, it's Japanese people buying those. No, guys, well, Hobby Link Japan, especially now Hobby Search. The one, the other, the second link we always list. That's the 1999.jp with then backslash English backslash car. They, they, you know, they do sell in Japan uh, primarily, and then they happen to export. Hobby Link Japan is owned by uh, an American, uh, run by an American, and is primarily designed to be an export company. Uh, that was the whole point of why Hobby Link Japan was created. And so, you know, while obviously they are, you know, sell a whole bunch of kits outside of the United States, Canada, Europe, and everything else, primarily it was designed, you know, it is an export company. They do not sell uh, directly within the within Japan, within the confines of what we would consider to be like an online retail, like Tower Hobby or something like that. They do have like an import group that imports Ravel stuff to Japan. Japan and, and whatnot, but uh, you know, a good chunk of those pre-order uh, slots are taken up by people outside of Japan, which you know, a lot of people were kind of grousing about that price tag. But it is what it is. Also, uh, from Racing Forty Three, they announced. Well, well uh, shouldn't say they announced. They have a new website. Uh, they were selling mostly through eBay and uh, on Facebook as well. They have a new website. Uh, if I remember. I'll put a link down in the description. I'm real bad about that. I'll I'll set the video to upload while I'm going to do something else, and then you know when it's uploaded, I hit OK, and then I you know be on my way, and I'll forget all about putting links and stuff in. But uh, they uh, put in a few more things that are in the coming soon. Some stuff, some GT3 decals. We'll talk about those uh, as the releases come along, because so much so many of them are you know in the future, month two months out. And they also announced that they're going to be doing a carbon fiber set for the Bell Kits uh, Volkswagen Polo uh, World Rally uh, Championship car. So, again, there's no release date on that. I want to just toss that out there to the people who are interested in that uh, type of kit that uh, even if Studio 27 doesn't do one, which, you know, it doesn't necessarily seem like they will. It's not something I've seen in the pending upcoming uh, release uh, sheets that I've seen from Shizuka. But even if they don't, there will be, if you want to go, you know, full Monty on the carbon fiber, there will be a carbon fiber set uh, from Racing 43. Those guys are in Spain, and uh, their decals are printed by uh, Zanchetti, which is a uh, major competitor to Cartograph, similar quality decals. I have some of their GT3 stuff, so, uh, you know, I'll vouch for the fact that they are as good as Studio 27 stuff. Even though Studio 27 stuff isn't produced by Cartograph anymore, it's done by a company called Umi Graphics. At any rate, uh, the other, I guess, the other piece of information we have uh, is the fact that the Golf McLaren, the number forty-one uh, long tail kit, obviously has sort of oozed its way into uh, June at this point, and 
Also, the uh, two Hasegawa releases we're expecting, those are obviously been pushed back to June as well. The round two kits, uh, the round two kits that we're, we're expecting for May, the 66 Ford Galaxy 500 and the 1941 Ford Woody Custom, both of those have uh, drifted back into June. Uh, on the domestic side of thing, I guess I forgot about this. The domestic side of thing, uh, the Ravel Auto Transport trailer, the uh, car hauler, uh, is out. I've seen a few people with uh, who have purchased them. Plus, I you know know from the vendor I deal with that they're out. So uh, that's available again. It's a six position, one twenty fifth scale car hauler. Um, despite the fact that most people usually associate with a Ravel of Germany box, it was designed in the United States uh, way back when Ravel was still out in California. And uh, you know, it's not an old old kit. It's probably yeah, the tooling's probably thirty five years old at this point. But uh, you know, it's not it's not an old design. It is an '80s design car hauler. Uh, there are no chrome parts for it. I know a couple of people were concerned about that uh, for one reason or another. Uh, car haulers, you know, independent car haulers, which is what this trailer would fit into at this point in 2015. It would look kind of similar to some of the five or the most, well, technically the six or seven position because it's real hard to find a five position car hauler anymore that uh, Cottrell and a few other people make. You know, some of those guys will put chrome rims on their uh, their uh, you know equipment, but not everybody does. And you know, it's you know, I, I, to me it doesn't matter because if you were, you know, I, I would probably have dechromed the wheels and painted them something different anyway because most of those trailers that I see aren't equipped with Al, with uh, alloy with Alcoa uh, aluminum rims. Um, or something else. Eh, well. We'll remember it as we go along. You know how this works. At any rate, uh, so that's the that was the one May Ravel release. It's out. The BMW Z1, which is in a Ravel of Germany box, uh, is also out floating about. Uh, they've been all over eBay f ever since they were released over in Europe last month. So if you want one of those, they're you know relatively easy to find. You're going to pay a little bit more for them than you probably would uh, finding any of the the uh, used Ravel USA boxes that from the what 90s I guess when that kit was was originally released uh, you tell it's the end of the day <laughs> uh, so you know it, I will say that you probably have uh, less chance getting a warped one or a crushed one or one with uh, decals that you can't use if you buy a new one it depends on what you're looking for on the the uh, international side of things there was the one new kit released this week from tamiya and that of course is the honda s600 kit now i've taken a good look at the decal or the decals well the decals sure but the the uh details and the instructions for this kit and while this kit is obviously patterned after and in certain technical design senses designed after the honda s800 kit that uh is in the of course the historic car series that they did i believe this to be a brand new piece of tooling there's also why uh, the the uh, price on this is in the well if the exchange rate wasn't good 35 dollars range but the exchange rate right now is ridiculously good i i paid for the shipping tonight guys and uh ebay is doing 120 to 1 yen ratio which means that the actual real exchange rate is is even better than that so you're going to get, uh, you know, this is one thing here is a Honda S600. Uh, you can't, you build it like it is on the box. The instructions give you details to paint it either white or red. I don't know if they were available in other colors or not, to be honest. But the uh, body is quite obviously different from the S800. Uh, the wheels are different. Uh, interior pieces are different. And there's some uh, additions or, and well, subtractions as well, but additions to the engine to make it, uh, correct for this model year uh and model uh you know if the s600 versus the s800 uh, a lot of the chassis stuff and uh the basic engine components stuff like that again are obviously patterned after the old the uh, older kit however like i said i believe this to be a completely new tooling i'll be interested to see if there's an s600 racing kit in the future as well because people that know know there's a, there is a racing version of the s800 uh, it looks like a nice kit. Looks like it's you know good kit. If you have the S800, you pretty much know what you're getting into with this. It's a t it's a teeny tiny little car. It is again a full detail kit. You do get an entire engine, transmission, uh, transaxle, the uh, unique chain drive that these things had in the back. Remember, at this point, this is Honda's first production vehicle, and they were a motorcycle company, so it has a sort of a chain and sprocket drive uh, rear differential to it. Uh, 
that is you know something from uh, motorcycle technology rather than a traditional drive shaft. Eventually, traditional drive shaft did take place in the uh, S800 in the uh, later years. And you know, I, I, there's not a whole heck of a lot else to say about this because so much of it is patterned on an existing kit that I know a lot of people have, if they haven't built, have at least seen built or have or own in some sense or fashion. I mean, I have my S800. I haven't built it yet. Uh, I've started it, and then it went on the shelf in a cleaning fit, and it hasn't come back down yet. But you know, it's not it's not like the Toyota AA for next month where it's going to be a brand new kit. Uh, you know. It is, a, it is a new kit, but at the same time, it's not really quite a new kit. Uh, one other thing about this, I guess, before we go on to the next stuff, is that the uh, windshield frame is separate. Uh, you know, it's not, so you don't have to worry about that being uh, smushed or smashed. Same thing with the S800. It was separate there, too. There is an up top for, the, for, uh, for it, uh, but it is on the clear tree, like a good deal to me as up tops tend to be. Uh, I believe it is a soft top, not a hard top. But, you know, just, just so you know, if you happen to get one and you're not used to Tamiya things, it is on the clear tree. Uh, so, that, you know, you could put a a convertible top up but still see all the interior, which sort of seems redundant. But that is the way that Tamiya tends to do things. And then you have three reissues. Two of them are from uh, Aoshima and one of them is from uh, Fujimi. Technically, this is a new kit uh, as well. This is one of those, you know, the air quote new kits. This is the Nissan Skyline. Uh, 350 GT, which, of course, as I pointed out before, uh, would be a Infinity here in the United States. But this is a JDM-only, right-hand drive-only Nissan Skyline. What is new about this is is a combination of the regular 350 GT Premium and the Nismo kit. Uh, The differences between the Nismo and the 350 GT, the base 350 GT being what is shown on this box, uh, there's a different set of wheels as well as a different front and rear bumper. Uh, as I mean, There's also a spoiler for the Nismo uh, version. It's not, uh, you know, greatly different. I mean, it is, you know, more aggressive Nismo-y looking, but it's not like, say, the Nismo 350Z that Tamiya did where, you know, it's, f- you know, big fender flares and a big spoiler. It's a much more sedate uh, Nismo treatment. You do get Nismo decals with it and stuff like that. This also has window masks in it for the first time. Uh, this kit ended up coming out or being announced probably, I want to say, f- what, three or four months after I finally tracked down one of the Nismo versions for a halfway decent price. So, uh, as usual, if I buy something, you, you guys have a chance to pick it up much, much cheaper later on. Uh, and the two re- the two honest reissues from Aoshima are this uh, V-Lean uh, Luxury Life. Toyota Crown Majesta. This is based off the 2004, or, well, yeah, the 2004, because it was 2004, 2006. The 2004 uh, Toyota Crown Majesta. Uh, it is this obviously one of the uh, VIP cars. Uh, it offers the, of course, on the instructions sh- or the uh, box art there showing the adjustable suspension thing. All of the Majestas, no matter whether you get a factory stock one or not, all have the adjustable suspension. It's just a, a feature of the chassis that is underneath all of the Crown, Royal Crown, Athlete, and Crown Majesta kits. Uh, you get the big uh, 20-inch wheels here. And uh, I really don't believe there's a whole heck of a lot about this that's necessarily that much different from regular Crown Majesta. I mean, it does, I believe, have a specific front, uh, at least front bumper, and some side skirting there. There, And obviously you don't get a factory st- uh, stock set of wheels with it, but it's not uh, nearly as out there as some of the VIP cars are. The other reissue, uh, and this is sort of an interesting one, I mean, we mentioned it in our May compilation video as well as in April when it was announced originally, this is a Toyota Mark II Tour 5. This is the JZX90, it's the chassis designation for this kit. This is a uh, mid-90s uh, Mark II. This, this is similar to the Fujimi Mark II uh, Grande 3.0 that was uh, reissued by uh, Fujimi about uh, three or four months ago. However, the Tour 5 is a different trim level. Uh, if you look at these two, if you would look at the Fujimi kit and this kit side by side, unfortunately, I don't possess the technology to do a split screen. You would notice that they do have different wheels as well as this Tour 5 has a spoiler that the uh, Grande G by Fujimi has. This is also not nearly as basic a kit as the Fujimi one is. The Fujimi Grande G is a curbside, as is this Tour 5. However, the Grande G that Fujimi did is a very promotional-based uh, 
chassis. It's literally some, you know, they're, they're, I'd have to go get the kit out to see, but I don't even think there's any chassis parts to it. I think everything is pretty much molded in. Maybe the upper, or well, would be the lower technically, the lower A arms and the lower uh, part of the rear suspension is there just to hold the wire axles in. This has your traditional uh, Aoshima curbside build where you know the, the the struts and the front uprights are separate, the rear suspension is separate. Uh, you know the engine's obviously molded into the chassis and stuff like that, but I believe there's at least part of a separate exhaust system here. Uh, the one reason I say this is an interesting kit is because Hobby Link Japan refuses to admit that this exists and has been reissued. Uh, I'm sure I probably could go, you know, write an email and get this fixed, but I already got you guys your uh, Toyota <laughs> Land Cruiser prices fixed. Uh, you know, all joking aside, I really did write them when their prices were really all out of whack and they adjusted them. So I suppose that I could probably mention that this has been reissued, but uh, I, I I ordered mine through Hobby Search. Right now, Hobby Search does have them in stock. If you're really, really that interested in what is a very basic piece of Toyota transportation. But, like I said, I just want to put that out there that it is uh, reissued. But if you go to, to Hobby Link Japan right now, it is going to show discontinued. It won't even show up in the search, uh, traditionally speaking, unless something has changed over the weekend. Uh that was not there uh, today on Friday. So I don't know what else to tell you guys. You could, you could write to Hobby Link Japan and ask them why they're not carrying it. Uh, you know, if you want to save the buck or two from uh, Hobby Search or you've never ordered from Hobby Search and you don't want to change vendors or something like that. I tend to order uh, from both as the situation warrants. I have a order into of that Tour 5 as well as a couple of more BMW GT3 kits coming from Hobby search, and then of course I do you know most of my stuff through Hobby Link Japan. So guys, that's it. Next week uh, will be the June compilation video. Uh, will be the video of the winners of the hundred subscriber giveaway. Uh, I have already contacted the two people that won. I ended up giving away two things because while we'd never made it to two hundred, one hundred eighty-five was close enough, and I don't feel like doing another giveaway. You know, in a month or two when we do hit two hundred. Uh, I'm not going to announce who those people are because, like I said, I have one another video made of that. So I got I just need to find a Wi-Fi connection that's reliable enough to try to upload some stuff. Uh, but uh, as we get, I'm not heard back from me. The one of them. I'm not sure what YouTube's little uh, <laughs> YouTube's uh, messaging system goes to. I'm, I guess that would go to your Google, your Gmail, maybe. I don't know. Go check your Gmail if you enter the contest. See if I wrote you an email saying, "Give me your shipping information." Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, uh, you know, as the probably next week we'll get uh, maybe Aoshima's uh, July spot runs and stuff like that because you know, if you're new to the channel, which of course eighty of you are, uh, the Asian kit market tends to announce their spot runs, which are their limited reissues of older kits. Think of uh, anytime Ravel uh, reissues something that's been out ten times. Uh, they will announce it about uh, 45 days in advance. And then, uh, you know, the new stuff we tend to know about months in advance. Like uh, next month, an example of this will be next month we're supposed to get the, uh, uh, the 1988 Lamborghini Countach Quattrovol 5000. Uh, or 5,000 quadruple, however you want to look at it, fuel-injected kit. Now, we've known that kit existed since before Christmas. Uh, don't know if that actually is going to make it out in June. It's one of those sort of fence-line kits where it may come out, it may not. It all depends on uh, licensing at this point and getting the thing packaged up and ready to go. But we've known, like I said, we've known about that kit for a while. The 2015 Nissan uh, GTR, the left-hand drive North American version, is supposed to come out in June as well from Aoshima. Uh We've known about that kit's existence pretty much for almost 10 months now because when they announced that they were doing a 2014 Japanese version, we figured there would be a North American version because they have done a left-hand drive version of that kit throughout its entire production run since 2007. Uh, the spot runs, the stuff that they are doing limited reissues of, like the Mark II Tour, like that V-Line Majesta, they only let us know about uh, about... 45 days in advance so that's what the term spot run is if you're not familiar with it uh you know it's not like uh Ravel and they're do now doing their releases quarterly uh or round two who technically speaking I believe we have release information for through September at this point but 
I only announce that stuff month to month unless they're going to give me an actual flyer because so many of the things that Round 2 has said in the past that they plan to reissue, the 71 Demon for is a really good example of that, just have never materialized, have evaporated over time, and, and nobody knows anything about why. So, uh, you know, that's why we don't go into Round 2, uh, you know, reissue, reissue, because everything Round 2 does is reissues, frankly. Uh, we don't go into speculation of what they're doing months in advance. Uh, they did put out like a first quarter flyer. You may remember if you're, you've been along for this ride the whole time, but they haven't put out a second quarter or a third quarter. Now, I do have a list of things that for the second quarter and the third quarter, but I'm not giving you <laughs> any kind of false hope until I know that they're actually going to be doing the things. And... Uh, and then, uh, again, more for the new people, if you're still hanging on to the video, 20 minutes long at this point. But, you know, we'll uh, usually the first week of, of, of the month, we get uh, new stuff from Aoshima. The second, by the middle of the second week, we get the next month's stuff uh, for Fujimi. The third week is primarily kit, uh, you know, announcements as they come, or the kit releases as they come in. Then the fourth week of the month like this right now, it's kind of a slow thing. Where there's no news, it's too or it's too soon for that, and uh, most of the kits have come in. Looking at June, guys, for every, everybody who's uh, waiting on the stuff from June, uh, we have no firm announcements on the Tamiya stuff or the Hasegawa because the Nissan Sunny is supposed to be coming out in June. But uh, all of the uh, Fujimi stuff, for the most part, is supposed to come out in the first half of the month. Uh, they have done official box art now for the uh, the, the short tail streetcar, the the uh, F1 uh, McLaren F1 LM, as well as the 2013 version of the Lexus LS 600 HL. Uh, the HL is the one that's supposed to come out at the end of the month. Again, at the end of the end of June, allegedly is when the Lotus Europa, that's you know, months into delay right now, is also supposed to be coming out. But the Reissue of the of the uh, earlier skyline of uh, the earlier skyline GTR the uh, S15 Sylvia uh, dual kit as well as the McLaren and the two uh, easy semi I don't know if they're molded in color pre painted yet still don't know uh, are all supposed to be coming out around the 10th of the 15th so that's what the schedule looks like guys uh, we'll catch you all in a couple days for the compilation video and until then we'll see you guys on the other side.